Welcome to Global Music Link TV. Milton Allen here, and we have today as our special guest, the one and the only, the magnificent Mel Holder. Milton, I am humbled by that introduction, but I'm equally happy to be with you and to share this moment with you. Well, it is the name of the new album, Magnificent. Yes, yes, it is. So that, that <laughs> Mel, how, how long have we known each other? I guess 10 years plus, maybe 15, it's pushing 20. It's more than 10. Well, I don't want to give our age away. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, okay. I got you. I got you. So, Mel, listen, you've got, you've got the new project out. You've got an uh, amazing song, amazing title track with Rance Allen. You've got an incredible track with Ben Tankard. How, how, do, how do those, how do, how does, how do, where does jazz and, and, and gospel meet? How do you, how do you do that? I don't, I don't look at it as jazz and gospel meeting because I believe they're together because I'm a source of music. I'm a source of God giving me a song, giving me music, and I put it out. It's the world that want to define it and put it into a genre. I just put it out as God gives it to me. He gave me Magnificent, and it happened to fall into the gospel genre. He gave me Crossroads. It happened to fall into the jazz genre. But I just get it as God gives it to me, so I put it out there. I let the world and the the list of the itemization that the world have deal with it, but I just believe that the gift that God gave me is to present music to the world. Now, you've, 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 you've played, you've done all kinds of music. You've played in R&B bands, mm -hmm. you've done, how, how did this evolve? What, what was your first love in terms of music? Was it R&B, was it jazz? What was the evolution? How did you get? To be honest with you, my first, thing about music was I remember a Frank Sinatra song that I heard. I didn't have no, no inclination that I had a, a, a talent. I remember the song was My Way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I remember my mom used to play it over and over mm -hmm. again. And I said, that's kind of nice. Okay. And then when I got a little older, I got exposed to the R&B. So then I used to like James Brown. Uh, I like those kind of groups, and I like hearing Aretha Franklin, and I like hearing the stylistics, I like hearing the shy lights, and all these were things that were happening in my environment, so that's where my musical ear got tuned to. Uh, it's not till I actually got introduced to the saxophone that I just, it became some, a part of my expression. That's when I knew that God has given me something inside, and the saxophone was the instrument for me to use to express it. I understand. I understand. That's great. So let's talk about let's talk about this amazing song and video you did with Rance Allen. First of all, the video is just totally blowing people away. <laughs> Thank they, God. They, they can't believe the video, and the song is such a wonderful song. Um, and you've done you've done many collaborations before. Yes, yes. But this one seems to be very very special. Well, all I can say is it's good to be in the place where God wants you to be when he wants you to be there. And I say, I've been at it for numerous years and I was always looking for that song. Uh, Magnificent is a, a, a new chapter in my journey. Um, I didn't start with Magnificent. I had other songs through the years that I learned, I evolved. And one of the things I learned on this project that was a key point, it wasn't what to do, but it was what not to do. And certain things that I've done in the past, I said, I'm not going to do that this time. I'm not going to do that on this project. And that's why I got to the place that I, I, I reached on this project, because I was saying to myself, I want to do something different. But all the things that I've done in the past, especially the mistakes that I've made, I don't want to repeat them. And so I went deeper to find songs. I went deeper to look for melodies. I went deeper to look for things that ministered to me first but also I felt would minister to people, not just having a song because it sounds good or because I like it. I went to find songs that minister. And it, and it didn't have to be a gospel song. It could have been an instrumental song, but songs that minister to people. And what you mean minister means that they, they feel a need, that people can feel an emotion that gets them closer to God or just make their, lift their spirits. So I was looking for songs that did that. And when I found those songs, those are the songs that I produced on the record. Yeah, let, let, let's talk, let's talk a, a delve a little more into that. We're talking about music ministry. We're talking about Korean, and all these things really are really one one thing. So, how has this? You know, I I do 
most of my business, the, in fact, all of my business overseas. Mm -hmm. So you, you've, you've toured Europe, you've toured yes. London, you've toured Africa. How do you see uh, how your music is manifesting itself in the spirits of people overseas in your personal well, experience? Uh, well, it's funny that sometimes it seems like, a, and it's biblical that a prophet is not respected in his own land, and you go other places and you see the acknowledgement of your music, and that's quite humbling that people do not, that do not have a personal relationship with me that actually can listen to my music and really feel blessed by it. Uh, that's humbling. I see it all the time, especially when I go to the UK. I just got back from Germany and I saw the people over there that really embraced my music. Uh, yesterday, I just got an invitation to go to Cuba. This is my second trip to Cuba and the people in Cuba really embraced my music. So I look at that as just me being an extension of what God is doing in me because I have no control to make them do this is just the extension of what's God doing in me, and he's allowing my gift to touch people. All right, so, uh, so st starting from the, the point where you are now, what do you see, what, what, what do you see on horizon for yourself overseas hmm. with Magnificent? Well, I see things that I've never seen before. I see, actually, I'm really excited about going back to South Africa. Um, I re my start and my formal recording career as a solo artist actually started in South Africa many years ago. I did my first music video in Durban and it had all South Africans in it. And I thank God for someone that was very instrumental in my life and at that time was Lloyd Evans that brought me over there and invested in me. And I went over there, I went to Durban, I went to many churches there, I did some of the jazz um, venues over there. And one of the best times that I have witnessed in worship was in Johannesburg, South Africa. I remember uh, we was, I just got off the plane and, and I went to a service and they had a lot of young people there and they were doing something similar to what we would call the electric slide, very similar, that's how I can describe it. But as they were dancing and they were just, just going in, the presence of God came and, and, the, and they had a tent. We was under a tent, I remember, and it felt like the tent literally was just lifting into the air. And I felt that and I felt a freeness and, I, and this was the first time I actually felt that. And I just said, wow, God, you can move in a miraculous way when your people are open, when your people open up their hearts, when your people are hungry for God, and I saw a hunger there for God that I didn't see here. And once I saw that, I saw God pouring himself out in a way that I never seen before. And that humbled me and it showed me that we just can't take our relationship with God for granted just because we say that we're Christians, that he's gonna move. He wants to fill that need and he wants us to be hungry for him. He wants us to go after him daily, not just once a week at church. And that's what I feel, I went back to that in this project, Magnificent, to, that I wanted to have that hunger for God. I wanted to have that sense that I need him every day. I cannot make it without him. I wanted to go to the point to know that he is miraculous. He is marvelous. He is magnificent. And in the morning when I rise, he's the center of my eyes. And when I see that and knowing that he's encompassed everything of my being, then I know that I'm in the place that I can represent him and he can trust me to be that earthly representation to take the message to the masses. Amen. Mel, I understand that we, we, have, we have one minute left. <laughs> so in, 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 in this final minute, and uh, it's, it's probably a very unfair question. Okay. But what do you have to say to that person in some faraway place, in some mm -hmm. faraway land, that hears one of your songs for the first time, and they said, whoa, what was that? <laughs> I'm humbled by that question, but I would say this. I take no credit unto myself. I truly thank God for allowing me the opportunity to be a steward of the gifts that he has given me. And I thank God for allowing these people to have an ear and an open heart that this gift that I have can minister to them. And I would say to them, this gift that God has given me is not for me, but it's for you. And if you allow God to speak to you and talk to you, it will take you to great places. Amen. Mel, th thanks so much for coming on G Global Music Link TV, and we'll be we'll be seeing each other on the road.
God bless you. Bye.